Hi, and welcome to the third build. And today, what happened? But seriously, thank you, because it made me so glad to see so many of you enjoy and learn from my past two videos. And I never know if my videos are going to accomplish that. And seeing it happen for the two that I spent way too much time working on just meant the world to me. And a special thanks to those who subscribed, because every time somebody does, I just get more determined to make it worth their while. Especially because something's coming and I have a plan. But if there's any programming obstacle that gets in my way, odds are it's from the one thing that has plagued this AI from the very beginning. Because whether it's building a team or playing a game, this Pokemon always finds a way to wreck havoc. Future Sight AI's worst enemy, Ditto. <laughs> yeah, let me explain. The problem with Ditto comes down to how it acts differently than almost every other Pokemon. Ditto's only purpose is to transform into any Pokemon it's facing by copying its moves, stats, and abilities. Now, in theory, that should make Ditto the easiest to handle since it'd always be acting like another regular Pokemon. But Ditto cannot make a perfect copy, most notably leaving out its foe's health stat and item. And with those two exceptions, Ditto transforms from the AI's dream foe to the king of the bane of any programmer's existence edge cases. The reason why edge cases are such a problem is that they're situations that don't happen all that often, but if you don't account for them, they can cause some serious trouble when they do. The AI could work normally without doing anything special for Ditto, but when that pink blob does transform, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Because I've seen it do things from make a whole day's worth of training worthless to make the AI think it has 25 moves, or even just crash the whole system entirely. So let's just break this down and start with the place where I realized that this slime was becoming my least favorite Pokemon. The AI initially learned to play by keeping track of every Pokemon's actions across tons of battles. I thought my approach to attribute actions to the Pokemon who did them worked, but because I wasn't covering the edge cases of the Pokemon being a transformed Ditto, the data I got back was always off. It'd either come back thinking Ditto simultaneously had all the stats and all the moves of the Pokemon the AI saw it transform into, making it look like some kind of ultra threat, which doesn't work because, well, sorry Ditto, but you ain't all that or having no data on Ditto and attributing all of its actions to the Pokemon it transformed from, which also doesn't work because how you play with a transformed version of a Pokemon is usually different. So fine, I'll just make an exception for whenever Ditto's on the field. Well, I tried that, but that just revealed another unhandled case where Ditto can switch in while staying itself and having to transform one turn later with the move transform. And because transform is a move, which would not exist without Ditto, it can be learned by one of the most used Pokemon, which just amplifies and complicates all the existing cases. Also, in the previous games, being a move comes with the wonderful perk of being used through metronome. That move is just a problem onto itself, but figuring out how to deal with the edge cases of both transform and metronome combined? <laughs> okay, let me calm down for a second. Eventually, you do get through the edge cases, but while you're in the thick of things, it feels like every new error that comes up is caused by transform or a change you made to handle it. I'm not trying to go on a rant today. This was just frustrating. The worst part is that since there's so much potential for glitches, I had to make Ditto one of the few Pokemon that the AI will just never pick for a team. It's unfortunate because Ditto can be quite useful, but the risk is too high. One thing worth noting is I am far from the first person who's tried to read data off of a showdown battle. So much so that there's already widely used code out there to do just that. However, I couldn't justify using it for several reasons. The main one being, wait, stop right there. I know you wanted the reasons, but I already said, I'm not going on a rant today, so you're just gonna have to wait for later. So just, so they're away. So the main one being I'd still have the right conversion code to get from how they represent data to how I need it, so it wouldn't really save me that much time. When it comes to playing against Ditto, the AI theoretically doesn't have that much trouble as it's quite predictable. When most people use it, they give it an item that allows it to be one and a half times faster than normal. So when it transforms into a Pokemon, it's always gonna be faster than who it transformed from. This means that the quickest way to deal with it is to somehow remove its item so it's no longer faster. However, by making the best move for the battle, 
The AI is making the worst move for itself, and that's because of the worst edge case of them all, speed ties. When two Pokemon have equal speed, the game will break the tie by randomly choosing which one goes first. Since the AI wants to look at every possibility of a random event to make the best decision, speed ties not only double the number of situations it needs to explore, but also that doubling happens on every turn it looks ahead. This means that if the AI wanted to look three turns ahead, in the worst case scenario, a decision that would normally take five seconds would now take over 20. Making the AI look through less turns in its 15 second time limit is the most surefire way to have it make worse decisions. And the fact that Ditto all but guarantees this happens when it's weaker is what makes that ball of goose such a threat. The real nail in the coffin is that there's nothing I can really do about it. Looking at the possible turns is a core part of how the AI works. So as long as speed ties exist and I don't fundamentally change the AI, Ditto's always gonna be its biggest problem. The other Pokemon that can cause serious problems can at least be worked around. For example, there is technically one family of Pokemon that can cause the AI even more trouble, but what makes the Zoroark line so complicated can just be ignored. They cause trouble on the inverse damage calculation side because they also transform, but they turn into one of their allies while keeping their own stats and moves. This means that if you're trying to do calculations and they're on the opponent's team, you don't know if the damage is coming from the actual Pokemon or the illusion that Zoroark is putting on. Now there are ways to figure out if it is Zoroark by looking at the moves they're using, the damage they're taking, and so forth and so on, but when I mapped out how much extra code I'd have to write to handle this mon, that almost no one uses, I just didn't. At the end of the day, I do this project in my free time, which means I often have to be selective in what parts I can work on, and handling this mod just wasn't one of them. That means that right now, the solution is to just not do inverse damage calculation when Zoroark is on the opponent's team. And avoiding the situation isn't the best way to handle an edge case, but sometimes it's the right one. While we're on the subject, here are some honorable mentions of Pokemon that can cause some problems. Smeargle. Its whole gimmick is that it can learn any move, and despite its role on teams being pretty consistent, forget move predictions, you'll get lost trying to figure out what moves that it has. And then there's Aegislash, who, besides just being very good, is one of the four Pokemon that changes forms back and forth during battle, which can cause a similar host of problems as Ditto, but the repercussions of messing it up aren't nearly as severe. And this is just a total hunch. But based on what I've had to go through, I'd be willing to bet that the least favorite Pokemon of the developers of this game are one of these three. But we can complain all we want and they're not going anywhere. Cause like, Ditto is super popular. The other one is super popular. And Smeargle, well, they actually removed Smeargle from the game. Huh. So there are a lot of bugs that could come up while making this AI most of which from situations that I wouldn't even think of. And there is so much room for things to fall apart that there were several times when I just felt buried in bugs and didn't want to work on the project for months. But then I thought that if I could find a way to easily catch these bugs and trace their path back to where they come from, I could stand the chance. My strategy was for while the AI runs through the code, it'll reach points where I'd have it take a piece of data it was either working on or had just calculated and log it in a file for later. While the data being sent from each point is different, the purpose would be to give info I could quickly check if it's correct and nothing more. That info could range from a damage calculation, a guess stat of a foe, or just a straight up error. And once the battle is done and all the logs are placed in order, I can see where errors occurred, scroll back to where things started going wrong, and focus my debugging efforts there. Now I found out quickly that reading logs of just text can get quite confusing. So in order to make real use of them, I had to find a way to visualize it. And that's where the analysis hub comes from. This is the real version of what you saw in the intro and is the tool I use whenever I want to take a deeper look into how the AI played and what went into its decisions. This is a heavily modified version of Showdown's replay system that allows me to get a visual of the battle, see the Showdown version of the battle log, check the basic metrics of the battle, look at the AI's predictions and analysis for each turn, and get a detailed view of the team that the AI used. Seeing all this data is great, but the best part of the hub is it's hooked up to a running version of the AI. So when I click one 
of these buttons, the AI will run just as if it was at the point in the battle that the visual shows, and I can walk through the code and see exactly what's being run. Also, fun fact, a commenter in the last video mentioned that it played the AI during the open exhibition, and because I keep the logs of every battle it's ever done, I was able to find that battle, and this is it. But wouldn't it be better if you could catch these bugs before running the code? Or how about even before you're done coding? Well, there is a common way of doing that, and it's something called unit testing, but this brings me to a confession. I broke one of the cardinal rules of programming a complicated project, because for all of the code that goes into the AI itself, I did not write a single test. So what does that mean? There are many ways to test if the code that you're writing works, but most of them boil down to finding what you want your code to do in certain situations and running the code to check if that's what's done. I chose to do none of those ways, but for my case, I should have chosen unit tests, as those separate large chunks of code into smaller parts to test those parts functionality by themselves. That should be a good approach, as trying to test the AI as a whole would be like asking, does the AI work well? Which is way too vague to have a good answer for. But breaking that down into a bunch of smaller questions like can it find a Pokemon it's looking for from a list or can it click the use Thunderbolt button and checking if all those answers are yes, it's much easier to know if that overarching answer is yes too. So the fact that I kept avoiding a tool I knew existed, was effective, and was created exactly for products like this is just about inexcusable. And if you expected me to pause and tell the programmers not to write a comment or something, you got nothing from me, because this time, I deserve it, and I am actively paying the price for it. It's so bad that as I've added more people to the project to work on the code, we have not changed more than a few lines, because if people start changing it that don't know all the ins and outs of how it works, it's just gonna break. Well, break more, because we've already found some just game-ending bugs, and um... I really wish I had done this earlier, but um, that's what we're doing now, and we'll get there. And because we've kept the AI in a working state, I think it wants some challengers. For this week, Future Sight AI is again open for battle, so you can either go to Showdown to battle it yourself, or watch it battle live on either my website or a Twitch stream I've set up. However. This time, there's a twist. I had something special planned for when I reached 333 subscribers, but since we've passed that, we're gonna do it now. The main mechanic of the first Pokemon game I ever played was that you could take team members from your opponent's team. So this time around, the AI is gonna do just that. If you win, Future Sight AI is gonna take its best guess of your team and use that team in the next battle. This gives us a chance to see the AI in some pretty unique situations. So I want to challenge y'all to bring some absolute chaos. Like, give me those gimmick teams. When are those level ones? <laughs> Show me those sedentions. And as long as you're battling in one of these formats and you don't bring any of the problem children, you'll be able to see what the AI can do with whatever craziness you bring. <laughs> Wait, I just told y'all exactly how to beat it. There are still some critical bugs. And I'm letting you battle it? What am I doing? Well, here's the thing. Even if it was bug free and I didn't tell you its weaknesses, given the current state of the AI, y'all were gonna win. Y'all were gonna win a lot. And I am well aware that if there are enough people who don't understand, watch it, by the end of this week I'll have people dismissing my AI as awful because it can't win all the time. And I'm okay with that. In the words of a professor who so clearly put the biggest lesson I've learned over my decade plus of programming, learning how to code is learning how to try and fail. I'll be hoping the AI wins, but if it loses, I'll be happy with that too. Because for every time it makes a misplay, throws a game, or just fails to find a way, that shows a clear place to improve its analysis, refine its plans, and come out better on the other side. And that's part of why I love what I do, because in a world where so many act like it's perfection or bust, and turn so much into uselessly cutthroat environments, coding is a place where mistakes are treated like they should, as a chance to learn. 
And yes, there are plenty of places here where messing up can have some serious consequences. But the goal is that you've failed an abundance of times so that way when it really counts, you've already learned enough. So bring it on. Give the AI your worst. Especially because, well, winning hides the mistakes and finding those are only gonna make it better. I'll see you later.